So I do think similar to sports, one of the things that's a lot of fun when it comes to professional wrestling is talking about who's the best, who's the greatest, and hashing that out, having that discussion, having that debate. That can certainly be a lot of fun. And I know I did a video a little bit earlier in this 30 Days of Taker series talking about my reasoning for believing that The Undertaker is the real Mr. SmackDown. While sure, we associate the beginning of SmackDown with The Rock. It's based off of one of his catchphrases. He was certainly a notable main event star in the first couple of years of that program. But when you go throughout the entire history of the show, nobody was more of a pillar, a benchmark, a representation of the blue brand than The Undertaker was. And it seems like most people agree. And we have different debates about who the real Wrestle, Mr. WrestleMania is, and I am certainly going to talk about that uh, in this 30 Days of Taker series as well. Um, but now, on the eve of Survivor Series 2020, I think it's time to have a conversation about who is the real Mr. Survivor Series, and is it The Undertaker, or is it somebody else? Because if I look at this, like you could use a couple of different criteria. You could certainly use criteria of most appearances, which after Sunday, for all intents and purposes, Taker will have that mark because I believe right now he's tied with Kane and maybe Shawn Michaels for 17 appearances each. After Survivor Series 2020, he'll be at 18, so he will stand alone atop the mountaintop. Um, and then you talk about, just in general, um, if you're not talking about total number of appearances, you're talking about memorable matches or moments or feuds or best matches, moments, and feuds, uh, how consistently they were in a prominent and featured spot. And I think there is certainly an argument that can be made for a guy like The Undertaker being the real Mr. Survivor Series. Um, and part of the reason I look at that is I say this is a guy that throughout his run has had, you're talking about, 18 total matches, because you got to add 98 when he wrestled twice. He beat Kane in the second round, and then he lost to Rock, I believe it was, by DQ in the semifinals. Um, but you're talking about a guy that over the span of two, three decades, there certainly have been years where he didn't participate. I had a couple of years where he didn't wrestle. I think 97 was one, 99 was another, 2002 was another. Um, and then you look at between... 2010, 2014, he didn't wrestle. 2016, 2019, he didn't wrestle. So there's certainly been some lags in, in Taker's career arc and his appearances at the show that marked the beginning of his career back in 1990, Survivor Series. Uh, and that's why I think it's a, to me, it, it's a little bit more of an interesting debate in the sense of I don't know if there really truly is a true Mr. Survivor Series. Um, but you can, you can have your opinions, but I don't know that there's any one clearly established criteria that establishes one so superior over the other. I will just maybe make a case for The Undertaker being it. Again, I talked about the 18 total matches between 17 different shows. Then you're also talking about in 2005 when he made the appearance at the end of the show, at the end of the main event, after Randy Orton had helped Team SmackDown win, The Undertaker makes his big return. But you're talking about 18 total matches, between solo matches and tag matches and traditional tag matches, he has a 13-5 record. Three of those matches are main events, um, not to mention the main event return in 2005. So he's certainly been featured in some prominent spots, and not always just the main event being last, but he's been in other featured spots, semi-main event, or in arguably the biggest show on the or match on the card. He's had four world title matches. Going back to when he won the belt from Hogan at Survivor Series 91. You know, you're talking about also when he beat a Big Show in Y2J for the title, the World Heavyweight Championship back in 2009. So this is a guy that's had a wide range of matches throughout the years at all different levels of the show. Uh, but when I look at The Undertaker, you think about in some ways you identify Survivor Series in part with him because you say, that's the place that the dead man debuted. That's the place where this all started 30 years ago. Now you might think of guys like, hey, The Rock debuted at Survivor Series 1996 in the Garden, and he absolutely did. 
But I think you think more about debuts at Survivor Series than you think about Taker and the Gobbledygooker in 1990, realistically. Some of you might think about the Gobbledygooker even more because you're sick, but it's fantastic. It's awesome. It's magnificent. You got a set of legs like my mother-in-law, pal. <laughs> but when you go back and you look, like, he didn't have 10, 11 world title matches or 10, 11 main events, but damn, when I go back to 1991, you forget about the historical significance of him beating a guy like Hogan for the title. It's crazy that that didn't even main event the show, but in some ways I think that was to kind of protect Hogan and say, hey, we still got to send the whole fans home happy, and Hogan dropping the bell in the manner that he ultimately did is not going to send the home fans home happy if we have a main event. But that was the featured match on the card, and that was a really, really big deal at the time. It absolutely was. And then you look at some of the other gimmick matches that you have. 1992, the coffin match against Kamala. Then you look at 1994, the casket match with Yoko Zuna. We had Chuck Norris there as a special enforcer, and we all know what happened there. Magnificence in heaven occurred. Um, but you look just over the years, you're stuck in some bad spots. Like, what was it, 2004, he had to wrestle Heidenreich. Like, this is a guy that had to deal with some crap. But he also gave us some really, really good stuff there over the years. And you just look at so many pivotal moments in the history of the company, it seems like The Undertaker was involved in so many of them. So I think you can make an argument based off of longevity, one loss record, some of the featured spots that he was in, that, that you could certainly make an argument that he most closely associate the Survivor Series show perhaps with The Undertaker and that he might be the real Mr. Survivor Series. Now, I could certainly throw out there other guys that have made a similar number of appearances, such as Kane, such as Shawn Michaels, and you can make an argument certainly that Shawn Michaels has had several featured prominent matches in Survivor Series over the years and some great performances. You know, feature matches like 96 when he dropped the title to Sid because Sid rules the world! 1997, we all know what happened there. 2002, when he came back and he won the title in the Elimination Chamber match and that epic 2002 show. Like, if you were to come on here and you were to make an argument to me that you wanted to say that you might feel that Shawn Michaels is the Mr. Survivor Series and Undertaker is more realistically the real Mr. WrestleMania, I could give you that. Like, I certainly think there is something to be said about it because when you think about Survivor Series... You think about debuts of guys like The Undertaker, guys like The Rock, certainly. You think about that Elimination Chamber match back in 2002. But ultimately, you think about 1997 in a lot of ways, and you think about Bret and Sean in the Montreal Screwjob. That's what you think about. So when you say beyond question, one of the most significant moments in the history of the WWF slash E, one of the most significant and noteworthy moments in wrestling history, period, happens at Survivor Series, and you're one of the main key cogs in it occurring, then I think you could certainly absolutely make 100% an argument that Shawn Michaels is perhaps the real Mr. Survivor Series. I could also say somebody like Randy Orton, because I think he's at like 13 or 14 appearances, and he has a really good history and tradition of being shot shined and spotlighted and showcased well in some of those traditional Survivor Series tag matches, he's another guy that you could potentially look at and make an argument perhaps that he could be the real Mr. Survivor Series. So I look at some of these guys and I say, you know, because in part maybe it's the 30 Days of Taker series, it's the 30 years, it's the Nostalgia Cup catching up with me. Like, I feel like there is a case, there is an argument to be made 18 total matches, 13-5 and five record. I mean, you look at it early in his career, when you talk about notable streaks, the first time he lost at Wrestle, or excuse me, at Survivor Series was in 1998, and it was to The Rock. So he had spent most of the decade of the 90s up to that point. He had won every Survivor Series match that he had been in. Multiple world title matches, and he's won the world title there a couple of times. A few main events thrown in there, including title matches, but three main event matches, a main event return. Like, I think you could also make an argument as well. So I'm curious to hear from you guys. Like, if you look throughout the entire history of the Survivor Series show, who do you think is the real Mr. Survivor Series? 
Now, I would even say you could potentially throw out an argument, depending upon your perspective. You could say that Survivor Series doesn't exist without the Hogan-Andre feud. And because Hogan at least wrestled at a few more of the shows than Andre, you might make an argument that you might say Hogan's the real Mr. Survivor Series. Although I think when you look at his track record, Ultimate Warrior had a pretty good run at Survivor Series too. But when I when I really, really think about this show and the guys that to me are most notable over the years for their work and their performances at Survivor Series, it is Taker, it is Shawn Michaels, it is somebody like a Randy Orton, maybe a Triple H as well. We got to throw God in there. Maybe it's a Cena. Like those are maybe the guys that you would most closely associate with the show. So who is it for you? Who is the real Mr. Survivor Series? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for checking out this installment from the 30 Days of Taker video series. If this is your first time checking out this series or this channel, smash that subscribe button, click the bell, what the hell, so that way you're notified of future videos. And keep coming back to this channel because we've got more videos to come in this 30-day series. I'll see you then.